So guys from the channel, welcome to another video, today what I'm bringing you here is a motor controller via PWM, I set up this project here it will be for my use, I'll make a mini plate drill for PCB for me not to stick with stapler, because it takes a lot of time and it is very time consuming so how do I have these printer motors so just put a mandrel on it and put the little drills to drill PCB. There are many schemes there to control the motors with transistor, regulating the voltage. Lowering the voltage with regulators, but I prefer the PWM, even because I think it's more fun and also particularly it has more power, in my case I set up this one to be placed up to 5 MOSFETs in parallel to withstand 50 or 60 amps of current, you can change the pulse width of the duty, cycle the work time and you get high currents there, of course you would have to increase the thickness of the wire. As this one is just a prototype even to present to the channel I didn't put a wire that thick. I put this flex cable here so we can adjust the pulse width here, I didn't solder this potentiometer to the board because I'm going to put it inside a case, so that's why I wanted to leave the potentiometer out. The circuit here PWM controller is a very generic CI is the 555 to do this work, I'll explain it in more detail in the schematic, right? And here we have a gate drive with two transistors BD139 and BD140 so we can put a lot of MOSFET in parallel, so it was below, of course, to withstand high currents you need to tin the tracks too, but mine here is just one little motor of this one so it's good size there guys, only one MOSFET of this one would calmly hold only one little motor, so far it can handle 16 amps. Earth 3205 it can handle 16 amps there continuously. A motor like this doesn't consume even 2, 3 amps at the most therewith. It's full strength. So I'm here with my power supply, charging my battery that I was using it yesterday to do other projects, I saved this power supply here it was burned, I set up this small drive there with the CAUC3843 to switch my source so I don't lose this switched power supply, so it's here sending 3.8 volts to the battery. And I'm going to show here how our motor control works via PWM. So I'm going to put the multimeter here on the 20 volt scale direct current, the little motor's negative and the positive one here on the little motor without touching the housing so as not to short it, and I'm going to connect it to the battery here for you to see. So it's there, the little motor is already at full power, 13.8 this is the voltage that is coming from the battery as I said to you, regulated in my switched power supply, the duty cycle is off longer than on, so the little motor it turns more slowly, as I turn the potentiometer here I change the pulse width and you see the voltage in the multimeter the voltage that is going to the motor. As I increase here the little motor runs faster, I'll put it to you can hear the little motor as it. decreases and increases the width of the pulse. So it's like this guys, the project was really top, the MOSFETs here don't even heat up, there are two Earth 3205 connected in parallel, there's a diode here so as not to damage the MOSFET, we put this diode there to protect the MOSFETs, there's still space for 3 MOSFETs, I'm going to put a lamp that consumes 4 amps and we see its brightness being reduced here. So I'm decreasing its resistance in the potentiometer here. So I'm going to get this lamp here as you see that I'm decreasing and changing the time the MOSFET stays on and off, we're going to change the brightness of this lamp here. This lamp is a 12 volt lamp that consumes 4 amps, so it must have about 48 watts. So I'm going to call here for you see, 
you'll see that the lamp will light up very dimly because the duty cycle is off longer than on. The lamp in parallel with the engine. The lamp lights very dim. I'm going to increase the potentiometer here without fire at all. Here it's maxed out and I'm going to reduce the engine speed and also the lamp's brightness, as we're decreasing and widening the pulse width. So let's see how the scheme I came up with here to make this motor controlled via PWM looks like, so let's go. So guys, here's the diagram, there's nothing wrong, I'll make a summary of this sketch here, it's very simple to understand, let's start with the voltage regulator, we have a 7812 here I put 12 to 30 volts that can reach this our PWM controller here, but I don't advise voltages above 30 volts because it can damage the 7812 voltage regulator. So at most it puts about 24 volts that I think it will support well, this regulator is here in the circuit to regulate the voltage for the 555 OCI, if you want to use it only at 12 volts you can remove this 7812, as I had it stopped here from another project, I put it here on the little board in case we want to increase the input voltage, ok? So no matter the input voltage here on the VO part, which is the regulator output, it will always have 12 volts stabilized with 555, this indication LED here is on but it is an optional LED, just to give the circuit a charm, if you don't want to put it, just don't put it, I put a 10 or resistor to limit the current to the VCC of the 555, which feeds it from pin 8 together with pin 4, I put a common 1N4007 diode even, very used in scrap, in case it happens anything there, some polarity inversion. I know it won't leave the voltage here, but I put it as a precaution ok. Together we have a 50k potentiometer to increase, extend or decrease the pulse width, duty cycle, decrease the work cycle so we can increase or decrease the power, a lamp a motor something like that, two diodes 1N4148 a fast diode low current, they stay exactly like this here on the potentiometer, if you invert there it may be that something doesn't work in the circuit. So they have to be positioned that way, pay close attention that everything will happen okay, we have it here a 150R resistor on. Top of the potentiometer, pin in the middle of the potentiometer there the reference goes to pin 7 of 555, on pin 6 of it we have a 10NF polyester capacitor in the negative along with pin 6 and together with pin 2, pin 1 is GND it is grounded, pin 5 is another capacitor that in this case I use 10NF polyester right? Pin 8 and pin 4 is interconnected to the positive and pin 3 is the pulse where it will send the pulse to the gate of the MOSFET, then I put a 33R resistor you can put a 47R also to power the base of the two gate drive amplifier transistors with a transistor ok. So here when I send the positive pulse it will feed the BD139 which will get the plus 12 will come out in its emitter and will connect the MOSFETs, so here we have two resistors of 10R in parallel, so adding 5 or that comes here, it it goes to a limited current that comes here from another 12 of the GND of the negative ground, so it goes to a limited and 5 are here connected in parallel. So it goes to the gates of the MOSFET that are connected in parallel there. At the MOSFET in the gate we have a 10 R resistor for each MOSFET and also together we have a 10 K pull dial resistor of the 5 or 6 MOSFETs you can also put it without problem together with the negative which when it sends the negative pulse will feed the base of the BD140 which in turn will lead here with negative emitter collector and will ground the gate of the 5 MOSFETs and thus it will be cutting the MOSFET. And staying turned off ok. So it's a brief amplifier AI very simple to make, only a 33R at the base of the two BDs and a 10R connected in parallel adding 5R at the gate of all MOSFET AI in parallel, right? All MOSFET drains are connected in parallel obviously there is no secret drain with drain with drain and all MOSFET sources are also connected here in parallel with the negative here, you notice that the positive that enters the regulator it only serves to feed the CI555 and also to power this LED here I put a white high brightness LED, 
here the positive is not passing through the regulator. It comes and leaves the battery and goes straight to the motor or lamp terminal. I put a fast UF5404 diode as the motor when you turn off the motor has to induce a reverse voltage of the motor coil so not to damage the MOSFET I put this free will diode here to protect the MOSFET. So if I saw a voltage positive here will drive and go back to the motor in an infinite cycle there, like we put in relay protection, okay? So it has the cathode for the positive, if you put the anode here and the cathode here, it will lead here, it will collect in the MOSFET drain and it will land in close short, so you have to be aware of that there, it has to be connected with cathode to the positive right. If each MOSFET is here according to the data sheet, it can withstand 16 amps continuously, then if you put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 amps, let's disregard the 6 amps, then I believe that this circuit can handle 50 amps flat current, however, you have to reinforce the trail a lot to support it okay. If you want a maximum MOSFET you take this amplifier here and put this part here directly in the 10 are here of the MOSFETs that it will support well, I just mounted this amplifier here to be able to mount more MOSFETs in parallel so as not to force the CI555 and it gets hotter, so if you're enjoying the video, I ask you to like it, subscribe to my channel, to be motivating me, and bring more people to our channel there, okay guys? I am very grateful to you who are subscribing to the channel there, and who are leaving the like to strengthen. So let's see the layout. So guys, how was the layout? It was very compact. In this case I only put 5 MOSFET, but I can put 6 too. Here we have a jumper, I put it here otherwise it would cover the numbering of the 555, but it stayed a very compact plate, it was 58.70 mm by 62 mm, it was very small as you will see at the beginning of the video. Here everything I showed you in the schematic, everything on the board is here, some MOSFET gate jumpers, the amplifiers here, the resistors in parallel from pull all, the 33R. That goes to the base of the 2BD, the 10R that will limit the VCC current of the 555, the 10 nano here, the regulator, and the thicknesses of the track which according to the program can handle 9.28 amps, so tin there, it can withstand 18 amps at the most, up to about 20 amps there with this thickness of the track, even because it's only for a little engine. So that's it guys share the video with your friends on Facebook groups, WhatsApp, that motivates me to bring faster videos often for you, so a big hug stay with God we will soon have more news, I went.